Paul Price, and we're good evening, and welcome again to another Nightline program. My name is Keith Kelly, and for the next hour, we're trusting God for His power and for His help and His grace to bring you a program tonight that will honor the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, certainly, we do have some interesting guests we have on the program tonight, Pastor Stephen Brooks, full-time minister, TV host of Pure Gold, and best-selling author. Stephen Brooks International uh, is a ministry that operates out of Moravian Falls, North Carolina. We'll share with you the contact information later on in the program, but right now you would uh, be served very, very well to just go ahead and prepare your hearts for the teaching of the Word of God. Throughout the program tonight, we'll also receive music ministry from Hearts of Grace. I believe that you'll be encouraged by their ministry as well. Our scripture for this evening is Lamentations 3, 19 through 24. The Word of God tells us that uh, the prophet Jeremiah cried unto the Lord and he said, I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind and therefore I have hope because of the Lord's great love we are not consumed for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for Him. Many of you tonight in our viewing audience can testify, uh, as can I, of what it was like to have grown up in church and sang out of the hymnal, Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Well, that was praise and worship then. And I want to tell you something, it's praise and worship now because we can still sing that to God straight from the Scripture. God is a faithful God. You can trust Him tonight. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, either one or both, call that number on the screen. And I promise you, in the name of Jesus, there are people who are eager to pray with you. Right now, we're going to go to Hearts of Grace as they bring us the old gospel ship and mention over the hilltop. Satisfied with the 
just a cottage below a little silver and a little gold but in that city where the ransom will shine i want a gold one that silver of a city I want a mansion a harp and a crown I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old and someday Well, thank the Lord for our hope that we have in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ in that this world is not our home and uh, there is a heaven awaiting us. But just in the same faith and just in the same strength and confidence that we have in Christ, until we get home, we know that God's will is that we do business for Him until He comes. And we are blessed this evening to have some teaching that I really do think is going to help us, it's going to better equip us to do just exactly that until He comes. As I mentioned just a while ago, we are privileged to have on the program uh, this evening Pastor Stephen Brooks, full-time minister, TV host of Pure Gold. Stephen, I want to welcome you this evening. Thank to you. Life. Thank you, Pastor Keith. Great to be with you. It's great to have you. Great to you. be back on the set again. Well, it's good to have you. When <laughs> were you here last? Uh, maybe about a year and a half, I think. Good deal. Time flies when you're having fun, huh? Oh, there's no <laughs> doubt about that. No doubt whatsoever. What does your ministry look like basically from day to day? Well, we do a lot of traveling. Uh, we just kind of came out of that. Uh, situation with the crowd strike, you know, where all yeah. the airports were messed up. So we got wow. pretty much stranded in Atlanta and uh, as many people did, suitcases piled up like mountains. And mm. so we were flying back from California, going back to Charlotte, but had a layover in Atlanta and really uh, the next flights out were days out. So we rented a car and uh, drove all the way back and our luggage is floating around somewhere at the Charlotte airport. We'll probably pick it up on the way home today, Lord willing. 
Uh, I know he's willing, but we'll have to go find it, praise God. But, you know, you just keep on pushing because when the kingdom work is at hand, you just find a way to work around it. Stuff happens in life and you just trust God and he gives wisdom and you keep moving forward. And uh, he has a way of opening doors, doesn't he? Yes, he does. That yeah. no man can close. That's true. And when God opens the door, uh, it's not always easy to go through doors of opportunity. Usually opportunity presents itself as work. That kind of makes a little some people afraid. <laughs> yeah. They want yeah. the open door, but the open door means greater responsibility. But you know what? The grace goes along with it. And so you just step through it, take those opportunities, go through the open door. And uh, you find that God meets you on the other side and somehow uh, you stay faithful of that and then eventually a larger door opens. And so we just keep doing that and he's making a way. There is no doubt about that. Stephen, how long have you been in, in ministry? I, I've got a feeling mm. probably a long, long time. Well, 1996 is when we started and mm. you know, just started with what we had being faithful in the little. And over the years, the Lord would be, bring increase, not only to the outreach of the ministry, but we also, as you know, as ministers, we grow personally. Sure. And there is, uh, you know, I started off mainly teaching, and then came the prophetic anointing, and so then it was prophet and teacher. Uh, and you just stay faithful to that, and then the Lord begins to add things, greater influence, greater outreach. And He really is um, a good boss to work for, isn't He? Oh, 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 the best. He is, actually. The yes. best, the yes. best. Uh, this is a whole other subject, but you know, uh, as, as ministers, the government looks at us as, as self-employed, mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's the way it is uh, legally, but we know really and truly we're Savior-employed. Yes. We're Savior-employed. And uh, how would you compare the, the passion because obviously you're, you're a passionate guy, energetic guy. How would you compare what you were passionate about mm -hmm. in, the, in the early days of your ministry right. rel relating that to what you're passionate about now? Well, the, the fire grows, you know, uh, and that passion can be the same for many because uh, in, in the reality of it, only about 15% of people are called in the full-time ministry. Just like in the, in the uh, Bible days of the Old Testament, you had the Levites and the priests. Yeah. But you also had the other tribes as well. So everybody can find their passion. And I truly believe that that, that purpose or destiny where the passion is ignited can only really be unveiled in Christ. So it begins by knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. When you begin to know Him, you begin to realize He has a tailor-made plan for your life. And as you discover that, it's very exciting. And then as you begin to get on that path of your fulfillment of your calling, whether it's ministry, like for you and I, or for others, right. maybe it's medical, maybe it's transportation, it could be uh, any uh, number of things, but you get into that and passion helps you to begin to rise to the top because I have found over the years that there, uh, there is a plan that God has where He'll take you to the top if you're willing to work with Him. Uh, and it takes uh, our molding and our yieldedness and our obedience to continue to move forward. The, the reality is also is that there's room at the top. Yeah. <laughs> people yeah. think, oh, it's too crowded. Oh, no, God's got room for all of His people. But there is a refining process He takes us through, a development process, so that when we actually get there, we can stand in that place. You know, sometimes we talk about favor, and we know that with Joseph, uh, the door of favor was open for him to stand before Pharaoh. Yeah. So it's, but it's more than the open door. Favor can get you into that place where you go through the door. But you actually have to have the goods so that when you stand there, that's right. you, can, you can be the blessing and not just show up with nothing to say. And that's the thing about Joseph. There was favor. Now he's there. But it talks about the wisdom that he operated in. So I think it's the same for us. We need God's grace, God's favor, but really we also need to learn all that we can about whatever our skill set or our career field is. You know, I have a friend of mine that years back he started off in Christian television and he was developing his own network. So he goes to one of these big national conventions and uh, where you've got all the TV gurus and stuff like that. Yeah. So he ends up standing next to like a uh, Hollywood producer who's like a veteran in the field. And so they struck up a conversation. And so um, as the conversation kind of started, this veteran producer asked him a question. And my friend said, I, I don't know about that. I'm not familiar with that. 
And that man said, well, if you don't know about that, what are you even doing here? Hmm. In other words, how could you not know that? If this is what, and so he walked away and realized, I've got to learn this stuff. And so, and he did. And so now his network uh, reaches millions of people, literally. But you, you have to, in a sense, even with grace, even with favor, there's still an element you have to pay your dues. Uh, you have to put the work in and put the effort in, and that's really what passion will do. It keeps that fire burning because you know uh, it's kind of like what we see in Habakkuk. The vision is for an appointed time, Amen. but but at the end it will speak. Yeah. See, it never speaks at the beginning. Yeah. All, all at the beginning, there's like glimpses, there's potential. Uh, it's it's like a vision or a dream cast before you, but. It only speaks at the end. Amen. And at the end, when it begins to break forth, you're like, wow, Lord, it was worth it. Amen. <laughs> Lord, Lord, I see that serving you and honoring you in whatever respected career field that is, that uh, I tell you what, it will speak at the end. But you've got to also be willing to hang out and push along until you get to the end. And then that's where the rewards are at. I love it. I love it. We have just a few more minutes before we go to our, our next song. And I know tonight we, we're going to talk about how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Yes. But I've got to ask you this, Pastor. <laughs> uh, you mentioned the word refinement. Yes. In just a matter of minutes, could, could you say a word about that time of refinement that we all go through yes. that prepares us for our assignment? Well, that's a great question. I think that when we're being conformed into the image of Christ, I think it's actually a package deal. Yeah. You know, um, uh, in certain sports, yeah. you can be really developed in some areas, but if you're not developed in other areas, you don't have the symmetry. Right. Uh, I, I remember, it's kind of a funny uh, carnal story, but when Arnold Schwarzenegger was yeah. starting off, he only posed like when he was standing in water. All you could see was from like the knees up. He was doing that on purpose. Why? His calves were not developed. One day a guy said, hey, if you really want to go somewhere, you're going to have to fix your calf problem, you know. And so he showed him how to get his mm. uh, lower legs developed. And then mm. he's not standing in the water anymore after that. I love but it. what happens is that some people, they don't have symmetry. And so in areas like that, you can't compete. In other words, you could be really developed here, but if you're not developed in that area, you're stuck at a plateau. So in the Lord with refinement, it's a package deal. You've got to pull it all together. So it's not like you can be real strong here and God's going to let you slide over here where you're undeveloped. You somehow have to give attention to these various things, really give God your best. Doesn't mean we're perfect, but we're, we're striving to please God the best we can with the knowledge that we can. And when you do that, though, that's when you start to see movement and you start to see yourself go forward. And then you'll have people say, oh, he's lucky or he's just yeah. that, that happened yeah. by chance. Uh, no, I was trying. Overnight. I was trying to yeah. make that. You know, I was. I was actually. Uh, it's not luck. It's it's a product of effort, which so much of that is behind the scenes that people don't see. So, but God sees it. And Amen. you know, I'll give you an example. We got stranded at the airport. So what happens? You either you either do something, or you're going to miss all of your television engagements. Well, we don't want that to happen because souls are on the line. We can build up God's people with the word. So what do we do? We were in a car and drove all night. Yeah. Never slept at all. Drove all night. Yeah. Well, I'd rather get my sleep. Well, but you see, a refinement is uh, you have to let the Holy Spirit help you. Now, he gave grace. Actually yeah. drove all night, didn't get tired. Yeah. I'm not drinking 12 Red Bulls, yeah. you know, but you have to be willing to do those things and God will help you. I love that. I love that. This is, this is helping me. <laughs> I, I mean that to the glory of God and your encouragement. Uh, this resonates with me in ministry and I'm confident that it does with you, so many of you as well. Would you hang around here with me for a minute? Yes, Pastor Keith. I want you yes. to stay with me, brother. We're going to go right now back to Hearts of Grace. I came to worship you and God is great.
Even though she was a sinner, her that didn't matter. All she knew was that Jesus she had to see. She took her box made of alabaster, poured the oil on the feet of the master. I'm sure if we had been there, we would have heard her say, Second 
thought God's been great I pray sought me, break the blood that bought me, how great, how long, on his arms of mercy, he reached way down to the bottom, picked me up, no problem, ain't God good, no God's grace. The blood that bought me, how great I long for his arms of mercy. He reached way down to the bottom, picks me up. No problem, thank God, good. No God's great. He reached way down to the bottom, picks me up. No problem, ain't God good. No God's grace. Well, blessed be the Lord. I'm glad that uh, He has given us songs that we've enjoyed this evening, but I'm also thankful that He gives us a song in the night. Even during uh, Pastor Stephen, those times of refinement mm. that we were talking about. Yes. Those times that uh, the Lord takes us through refinement mm -hmm. so that we can be better used for Him in, in whatever our assignment is. And in just a moment, we're going to talk about spiritual gifts. And I want you to talk about the different assignments that, that so many of us in the body of Christ have. But I, I've just got to ask you this. Just like uh, the situation in Atlanta that, that you and your wife faced as far as um, the, the flight and the luggage and, and, and all the cancellations, it's easy to make excuses, isn't it? Sure, and we have a human tendency to want to do that. Yeah. Uh, God talked about, He talked with Adam about the problem there in the garden. Adam said, well, it was the woman you gave me. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> so what we have to do is we have to take personal responsibility for our lives, for you and I, for our ministries. Yeah. Um, sometimes I've asked people, um, uh, how do you, people that would ask me, how do you stay up late and get ready? Uh, or wh what do you use, coffee? I said, no, I use responsibility. Yeah. I have to, I have to be prepared. I can't, right. uh, and so it's that knowing of responsibility that drives us to, uh, get ready to embrace what God has for hmm. us. And whether it's an exam uh, as a student in college, right. or whether it's a presentation at work, or whether it's trying to close a big contract, or whether it's you're about to go minister in a large crusade, it's that preparation that you do that is also part of the refining, but it's also a part of this just comes with the territory. So right. you embrace it, and actually it brings a deep sense of satisfaction uh, as you do that. How, how do you consistently make necessary adjustments, even, even when it's not a convenient thing to do? Uh, you just have to follow the Lord's instructions, die daily. Yeah, yeah, amen. <laughs> uh, as you and I both know, a lot of it, uh, good advice and good insight comes from our wives. And you have to be able to w listen to people who can see from angles and directions that we can't. So the Holy Spirit can see everything. He'll try to get it to us. But sometimes we, maybe we're busy or maybe we're, we're looking this way and we can't see that way. So God will surround you with good counsel, other voices, particularly like a spouse or maybe like another person at work that uh, knows what's going on over here. So we have to be able to listen. We know from Isaiah chapter 48, uh, in verse 17 that God said that I will instruct you in the way, I will, I will teach you how to profit. Yeah. So there is a path that goes into that area of success and increase, but He said, I will teach you. But you can't, you can't teach somebody that doesn't want to learn. So the very fact of teaching 
uh, requires that we have a humble heart where we recognize there are things I don't know. Right. And maybe we right. grew up in certain environments where uh, others knew things that we didn't. I grew up in Mississippi, at that hmm. time the poorest state in the nation. And also we lived in probably the poorest county in the nation. So I was not privy to what others knew in other places. So what does that mean? I'm exempt? No, it means I've got to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. It means I need to find out. And so that's what we do so that we can, uh, as we see in Jeremiah, if you want to run with the horses, you have to make adjustments. Because if you just want to walk, you can't get to where you're going. Why? Because others are flying. Wow. So we have wow. to move with the Spirit and He will catch you up. He can actually fast track you. That's what a lot of people don't know is that, uh, I'll give you an example. When a, when a car brand puts out their new model, every five years they rebrand the model and they put out their new version of it. But they know there's going to be mistakes. So what they do is they bake in the factor for errors. They know that somebody's going to be upset because this didn't work and their, the company's going to realize, yeah, we, we didn't think about that. So they will, they will make room for error. God bakes into our destiny, our yeah. walk, mistake time. But that doesn't mean we, we like uh, take it easy. Why? We're all in a race. There is a finish line. So we're actually running to accomplish what God has called us to do, and we don't get a second take. So while there will be mistakes, we're going to make some wrong turns off the freeway, but we want to get back on as quick as we can and uh, in an endeavor to stay on that freeway yeah. uh, so that we can, at the end, accomplish all that God has called us to do. You know, there's some people that are watching right now, and they're getting up there in years, and they're thinking, well, maybe I'll shut it down. But God said in Psalm 91, with long life, I will satisfy you. So a lot of people, they've been around for a while, but they're still not satisfied. Wow. So you have to be satisfied that you have done what God called you to do. And if it's Moses, your assignment is to the people of Israel. If it's Aaron, your assignment is to Moses. So you have to find out your assignment, get in that, and give it your all. And at the end, you can cross the finish line and you've You've made it, praise God. And then check out whenever you want. <laughs> you know, but Brother, long that, life. And that is a high five <laughs> for Jesus, a fist bump, Amen. a glory to God. That's really, 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 really good stuff. You mentioned earlier uh, God giving us grace. Yes. God giving us grace. And, and I want us to spend the, the rest of this segment talking about this. When God gives us grace, mm -hmm. that grace gives us gifts, grace gifts. Yes. You've written a book, in fact, very, very, very interesting about spiritual gifts. Would you say, yes. would you just say a word about that book and, and then just talk to us about spiritual gifts? Okay, well, we have nine gifts of the Spirit that are mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And what's wild, uh, Pastor Keith, is that in verse 1, Paul the Apostle says, I, he says, I do not want you to be ignorant about the gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. Now, this is what's amazing. In the area where Paul said, I don't want you to be uninformed. I really want you to know about this. That's actually one of the leading areas in the body of Christ that people don't know anything about this subject. And they look at the gifts of the Spirit. Sometimes they don't know what they are or they, they, they don't see them manifest it. Right. And so they, these things stay on the shelf. So the, the primary thing that Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant. In other words, I don't want you to not have knowledge of this um, is an area where many times people, they just don't know. And I, I'll admit there were a few of them. There was one gift particularly that just totally puzzled me. That gift actually, because I dug into it and studied it so much, began to operate in my life. That's actually one of the strongest gifts in my ministry. But yeah. the nine gifts begin with the word of wisdom. Now, uh, I've heard people call the supernatural word of wisdom somehow the ability to be smart. Oh, he or she has the gift of wisdom. Yeah. But you yeah. don't see that in the Bible. It's actually called the word of wisdom. Mm. So in other words, it's not me taking a whole set of encyclopedias and giving them to you and saying, here, learn all of this and then you'll have wisdom. No, it's a word of wisdom. And that literally can be one word or it could be a sentence, but it's, it's, it's coming from the mind of God. So in God's mind is all the wisdom of everything. Amen. He knows everything Amen. about everything. Amen. So what he can do by the Holy Spirit is he can take one word, not a whole book, 
not the whole content. He can take one word and give it to you. And if you do what he tells you to do through that one word, it could be one sentence, and walk that out, uh, it will always, always work in your life. So the supernatural word of wisdom speaks to something out in front of you. Yeah. Word of knowledge is past or present knowledge, but word of wisdom is always something out in front of you, and it usually carries an instruction, and if you'll do it, it'll work 100% of wow. the time. Wow. Naaman, go dip in the Jordan River seven times. Yeah. Well, that's stupid. That doesn't make any sense. The, ri the river's dirty. You, the river lo actually looks like chocolate milk. I've swam in it before. Yeah. He's thinking, yeah. well, why do that? It's a supernatural word of wisdom. And if you'll do it, it'll work. He did it, and it worked. Peter, uh, we need to pay the taxes. Uh, pay mine, pay yours uh, by going to the, uh, go down to the sea and uh, and throw in the hook with no bait on it. He's talking to a professional fisherman. Yeah. Throw the hook in. Uh, you don't even need bait. Pull the first one up, and the tax money will be in the mouth of the fish. Have you ever paid your taxes by doing that? No, but I felt like it a time okay. or two. I felt, uh, well, like, felt it, thought I was going to have to. Anybody watching us on television, have you ever done that? Have you ever paid your taxes by going down to the Sea of Galilee and going fishing and hoping you're going to catch your, your tax money in the mouth of a fish? No. What is that? A supernatural word yeah. of knowledge. You do this, God says, do this, and it'll work. Mm -hmm. And every time He has ever spoken a word of knowledge to me, uh, excuse me, a supernatural word of wisdom, it has worked every single time. Is, is that oftentimes through somebody else, or, or is it to your it spirit? It can be through somebody else, but oftentimes it's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. I'll give yeah. you an example. Okay. Um, one time we were getting real close to New Year's Eve, and I said, Lord, I've got to do a New Year's Eve service. Would you give me a word for the people, like a prophetic word for the coming year? And the Lord spoke to me and gave me a word, but the first thing He did is He gave a word to me. Yeah. He, said, and he said, I want you to ring in the new year. Now, at that time, my wife and I had been married for 17 years, and she was wearing her grandmother's wedding ring. It's pretty. She liked it, but I had never really had the money to get her like a really, really nice wedding ring. She had her grandmother's wedding ring on, and she had a smaller gold band that I'd gotten her, and she'd been wearing that for 17 years. And the Lord said, ring in the new year. And when he said that, I knew, I knew in here he meant go buy your wife a new wedding ring. Yeah. So... Uh, I had a, a, an account that I had been putting money in, putting money in, putting money in. I took all the money in that ca account, and I took my wife to a high-end jewelry store, and I let her pick out any ring she wanted, and she got a ring that has chocolate diamonds uh, from a jeweler that had been in business for hundreds of years, and she bought this. She's actually off the offset right, right over there. She's wearing the ring right now. She bought it, and I paid for it, and it drained completely the account. I only had like a couple of dollars in it before there was thousands in it, and it drained the account, hardly anything in it when I was done. I yeah. said, Lord, I emptied the account, but I did what you told me to do. In two weeks, God filled the account right back up, well, right back up to the same exact spot where it was before I bought the ring. I said, Lord, that's just like you paid for the ring. He said, I did pay for the ring. <laughs> I love it. Why? Because he it. told me to do that. Now, I can't go out and do something like that unless God tells me to do it. But if, look, there, there's nine gifts yeah. of the Spirit. Yeah. Which one's listed first? The word of wisdom. Love Why? It. It's the, actually the greatest gift out of all nine. Hmm. What is it? It is a revelation of God's perfect will and plan for your life coming from His mind by the Holy Spirit being delivered to you. And when you pick it up and do it, it will work 100% of the time. Yeah. I woke up one morning uh, after having been offered uh, a, a great... Uh, uh, well, I was doing really good at my company. I loved the company I was working for. I woke up one morning and the Lord spoke to me and said, Today, turn in your two-week notice. You're going into full-time ministry. Uh, I, uh, I said, oh, oh, okay, Lord. <laughs> I only had three meetings booked for the whole year. And so uh, I went in that morning and I, I told you know my manager, I said, I'm turning to my two-week notice and I'm going to be going in a different direction and I'm going to go into ministry. And he said... He said, Stephen, are you sure you want to do that? I said, I'm absolutely sure. Now, I didn't explain. I heard God talk because he wouldn't yeah. understand that. Yeah. But I said, I know I need to do this. He said, well, just this morning, me and the other uh, lead management team, we had just decided that you and one other guy, we're taking you two and we're taking you to the next level, raising you up. We really want you to be a part of this corporation much more intimately. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to take you up the ladder. 
And uh, he said, it's yours if you want it. I said, thank you. I've, it's been great working with you. I've learned so much, but I've got to go this route. And I stepped off into full-time ministry, and it's been uh, years and decades now. And the Lord has been, uh, he just took it. He just took it with me. See, when Jesus sent out the 12 and the 70, he sent them. And then they all came back reporting what had happened. And yeah. he said, I want to ask you a question. When I sent you, did you lack anything? And all of them said, no. Here's the revelation. When God sends you, he's responsible for you. If you go on your own, you foot the bill. And he said, when I sent you. So when God sends a man or a woman or he sends somebody into the work, that means he's responsible. Now, we still have to do the work. We have to do our part. But basically, we're now working for him. Amen. So uh, they all said, no, we haven't lacked anything. And I've met, I've met some before. They, they were out there, and I've seen ministers almost like starving. And the reality is, is they have a great love for God. They're willing to serve God. And they sense a calling, but he didn't send them yet. They went on their own, and that's why the hardships are so brutal. But you have to get that word so that when you go forth... See, anytime the word comes forth, it's like light breaking forth. Yeah. It's like flipping the light on. And when... When the word comes forth, faith is always standing mm. there ready to go to work on it. Mm. But your faith can't jump on something if there's doubt. And, well, I don't know if I really heard from God or not. But when he speaks, that's how faith comes. We know faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Yeah. But I like to paraphrase it. Faith comes by hearing God talk. So when he says something, now your faith can come on that and it'll work. I love that. I'll give you an example. Please. Uh, Peter sees Jesus out there walking on the water, and he's like, Lord, if that's you, bid me come. I mean, what's the Lord supposed to say? No, it's not me. It's an apparition. So it's, I'm a ghost. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. It's me. Come on. And yeah. so the Lord said, come. And so Peter walked on the water, and, and he did. But here's the reality of what was actually holding him up. That word come is what held him up. Because if Jesus would have said, don't do it, don't do it. Uh, he would have stepped off the boat and would have sunk. But when Jesus said, come, that word released faith in Peter. And as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus and his faith in what Jesus said, he could have gone out and could have come back. So it's the word that actually holds us up. And people sometimes say, well, how do you do what you're doing? Well, I just simply hear and obey because that word produces faith. And we walk on that word and it really does exempt you from so many other things that others don't go through because they don't have a word to support them in difficult times. Well, would, would this be the same thing as, as a rhema word? A word of wisdom is different from a rhema word okay. in the sense that a, wor a word of wisdom is a divine instruction. Do this, step into this. Okay. In other words, let your hook down, pull up the first fish there's a go uh, and go pay the taxes. Jesus said, mine first and then yours. So, you know, the, a, a rhema word is a word that would quicken you with life, that would strengthen you to yeah. continue on in the journey. Gotcha. Whereas that word of wisdom is so specific. Here's amazing reality. Also, you cannot hijack somebody else's word of wisdom. I just love well, that. Well, that worked for him. Uh, Say uh, that again. Okay. Say that again. Okay. You cannot take somebody else's word of wisdom that God spoke to them, and you hear about their miracle testimony, and go out and run out and try to do it also. True story. Mm -hmm. Young man was at a Bible college one time. The Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, give your car away to that brother who doesn't have one. He gave his car away, gave the title to the person, and the next day somebody gave that brother a new car. Mm. Well, he stood up in front of all the student body and shared his testimony and, whoo, the shouting, the, ha ha the clapping, the hallelujahs, and half the student body went out and gave their cars away and <laughs> walked for the rest of the year. And the, the, how come God, because God told him, God didn't tell you to go give your car away. Brother, that, that, that is a <laughs> microphone drop. That is a, and God can do that. We've got just a couple of minutes left. I want you to say a, a word about your book. We want to show the book. I'm yes. asking you to do that. I kind of get the feeling you're, you're not a, you're not a self promoter. I, I get that. But tell us about the book and how to get it and then, and then pray. 
uh, Pastor Keith, because I know people want the gifts of the Spirit activated in their life. I know the book will help them. Yeah. So the book is available on my website, stephenbrooks.org. They can go there and they can purchase the book at my online store. Now, if some of the people are like you and I, maybe they want it quick. It's available in ebook format. I like real books. I like yeah. a physical book. But sometimes when you just want it, okay, go to Amazon on your Kindle, download it immediately, just type in how to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, or excuse me, how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. Or if you're an Apple person, go to iBooks, download it, get it right on your iPad or your phone uh, if you want it quick in ebook format. But if you want the real book, jump by my website. It's there on my online store. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. We've got a, a minute or so left yes. in this segment. Would you pray, please? Yes. We have some prayer requests, Pastor, that are coming in. Uh, here's one that's actually a request for salvation mm. and also for protection. And then we have others that need healing. Praise the Lord. So what we want to do is I know that there are those watching right now and you don't know Jesus. But let me share something with you. God has an amazing plan for your life. Amen. And God really, really loves you. Here's something that you need to know, and I know that you already know this. The Bible says that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all made mistakes. We all have done things wrong. We have all sinned. The Bible says also that the wages or the payment of sin is death. That not only is physical death, but that is also spiritual death where you are eternally separated from God and you go to a place of eternal torment. The good news, however, is that God so loved the world, God so loved you, that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. And you're thinking, Pastor Stephen, I want that. Okay, the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. So right now, I'm going to lead you in a very simple prayer where you can call upon the Lord and the Lord will save you. Now, just pray this after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Save me Save. from my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. Lord, I surrender my life to you. Write my name in your book of life. And Jesus, step into my life today and lead me and guide me from this day forward. In your name I pray. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Now let us hear from you here at Nightline that you have prayed that prayer. Amen. And call in or email in and let us know that you prayed the prayer of salvation. We would love to hear from you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. So very, very much. Now, there just really are no words to say how much I appreciate what God is doing here right now. And I want to just go a step further and say, that uh, in this time that those numbers are on the screen for a purpose and a reason. And if you would uh, like to pray and receive Christ, if you didn't just then, or if you did just then, please let us know that. Would you pray now for those requests? Yes. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for these prayer requests. Somebody says they're going to need breast surgery. Uh, Father, somebody else recalling for healing, protection. Oh, thank you, Father God, families that need healing, uh, de uh, parents with dementia. Father, we just lift up these needs to you right now and others that are coming in. And Father, we thank you that your son Jesus is the great physician, Amen. that he is Jehovah Rapha, yeah. and he is the Lord God who heals. So Father, we thank you for the healing anointing flowing right now. Now lift your hands and get ready to receive. Father, I speak to that illness, that condition, that sickness, I rebuke it now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Here comes the anointing. Receive the healing power of God right into your body now. Some of you feel like you just went on fire. God is driving out the sickness and disease right now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Take your anointing. Begin to praise God. Also, the Lord Jesus is filling some of you with the Holy Spirit. Open your mouth and begin to give out the utterance. Begin to speak it out. Speak in tongues. It's flowing out right now. Lord, we thank you for your healing power. We thank you that you are delivering those that are watching right now from every condition that the enemy has tried to inflict them with. We thank you for your power. 
flowing now in the name of Jesus. Woo, praise God. Somebody, your feet just got healed. You had numbness in your feet, swelling your feet. And sugar diabetes is being healed right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're going to go now to Hearts of Grace as they sing Jesus Loves You. When you feel forgotten, when you feel you're all alone, when you feel like giving up, and when you feel discouraged and everything's uncertain, when you feel you're just not good enough When it's slipping through your hands And you've done all you can But there's still so much more to do It's easy to forget In times like Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you, and He cares about everything you're going through. Your name is engraved on the palm of His hand, that's a promise you can hold on. Forget in times like this. Jesus loves you. When the funeral is over and the casseroles are gone, and you're about as broken as can be, and when the sun are just too long and the weight of it all drives you to your knees I've been where you are when God just seems so far and I needed to be reminded too it's easy to forget in times like this that your name Jesus loves you Jesus loves you and he cares about everything you're going through your name is in gray in the palm of his hand and that's a promise Well, blessed be God. I can say this evening of a surety that same thing that Jacob said of old, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place tonight. We have been taught, we have been told, we have been educated, we've been encouraged. And I bless the Lord tonight that even though we're, we're living in a different day, we're living in a, in a difficult day, that we can still heed the admonition of the Old Testament when the prophet Eli told 
young Samuel just go and say, Speak, Lord, speak to me, for your servant is listening. And we prayed that prayer at the beginning of the program tonight, and certainly God has spoken in an amazing way. Uh, Pastor Stephen Brooks has ministered so effectively. We give God the glory for that. But Pastor, I just want to say thank you. Yes, thank you, Pastor Keith, for having me. Always a joy to be here. It's a joy to have you, sir. Thank a you. A great, great joy to have you. And uh, Lord willing, you can come back sometime. Would love to. Let's do it. And let's get that information up on the screen, if we could, please, uh, before we go off the air, if that is if that is possible, that contact information. There it is. And uh, we encourage you to uh, just participate in this ministry as much as God would allow you to do so. So, until we meet again, Lord willing, right here on Nightline. Remember in everything that we say, think, or do, let's live our lives with eternity in view. And in everything that we attempt to do, Let's do it all for the glory of God and, of course, just for Jesus. Thank you and good night from Nightline.